Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're going to look at differentiating e to the x, ln x and a to the x where a is any number like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, any number to the power of x. So we can answer questions from exercise 9b. Now I'm going to go through each of the reasons why the derivatives of each of these three functions is what it is but there is a set of shortcut rules that I will um, highlight to you at the end. So the first rule is e to the x. Now how does e to the x differentiate? Well what I'm going to use is the series expansion for e to the x. Did you know that e to the x can be written like this 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x4 over 4 factorial and that just carries on up to infinity. Now to differentiate this with respect to x, I can differentiate each of these terms here separately by using the standard to lower sixth rule for uh, differentiation in that you reduce the, you times the power to the front and you take away one from the power. So let's go ahead and do this. The first term one, that differentiates to zero. x differentiates to one x squared over 2 factorial. Now just a reminder what factorial is. Factorial means just 5, if I'm doing 5 factorial for example, 5 times every number less than 5 all the way down to 1 stopping at 1. So in this case here 2 factorial that's just 2. So my answer here is going to be 2x over 2 factorial and that, those two here will actually just cancel straight out with each other. X cubed over 3 factorial, that's going to be 3x squared over 3 factorial, 4x cubed over 4 factorial, plus 5x to the 4 over 5 factorial, and that carries on up to infinity. Now let's try and simplify what we've got here. Um, the 2's here will cancel each other out. On the bottom of this term here, we're going to have 3 times 2 times 1, if I cancel out a 3 there and a 3 there, I've just got 2 times 1 left, so that's 2 factorial. For the 4x cubed term here, 4 factorial, that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, cancel out the 4s there and there. So all I'm left with now is 3 factorial, so it's now x cubed over 3 factorial. Same thing with this 5 here, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, cancel out the 5s from the top and the bottom, and I'm now left with just 4 factorial. So it's now x to the 4 over 4 factorial, and that carries on up to infinity. And hopefully what you've noticed here is that if we look at what we've got on the top and what we've got as the differential, we've got exactly the same function. So e to the x is a really special function that actually differentiates to itself. So what's the shortcut rule here? If you've ever got y equals e to the x, then the differential of that is just e to the x. Same as if you had 7e to the x, the differential of that is 7e to the x. Okay, so any scale factor multiple of e to the x does just differentiate to itself. Now if you've got a power um, that has a scale factor multiplier just like k uh, is here, it's a very similar rule for sine x. Remember that sine x differentiates to k cos x where the k um, multiplies out to the front. Well the k does exactly the same here on y equals e to the kx. The e to the kx gets differentiated to exactly the same as what it was and then the k knocks out to the front. So in this case here, if you've got e to the, let's do an example quickly, e to the 3x, the differential here would be 3e to the 3x. So the number that's on the power that's multiplying by x just knocks down and is a scale factor multiple in front of the e to the 3x again. Okay, so that's a nice little quick shortcut rule for you there. And once you've done lots of these, you'll actually get really quick and really confident with these and this is a really easy rule actually. Now what we're going to look at now is how we differentiate y equals ln x and there's a bit of a complicated reason why but there is a nice shortcut rule at the end of it. So what we're going to do first is to be able to differentiate this we're actually going to rearrange this to get started with and we're going to inverse the logarithm. Now what's the opposite of learning something? The opposite of learning something is 
eing something. So if I e both sides, that cancels out the lun, and it's now e to the y on the other side. Now I know how to differentiate e to the something, that's just e to the something. So if I differentiate now with respect to y, so I'm actually doing it the wrong way round now, I'm doing the differentiation the wrong way round, it's dx by dy, I get e to the y. So I've just now swapped the letters round, I'm treating x as the y and y as the x, and I now have dx by dy equals e to the power of y. Now what I can do now is I can treat this dx by dy as a fraction and just um, flip it the other way round. So how do I do that? Well, I'll times by dx dy onto the other side, divide by dx onto the other side, and divide by e to the y. And once I've done all of that rearrangement, I get dy by dx equals 1 over e to the y. Now what was e to the y? Coming back up to here, e to the y is just x. So dy by dx here is 1 over x. So what's the shortcut rule here? If I've got y equals ln of x, the differential of ln x is 1 over x. Okay, so that's your shortcut rule there. That is something that you can remember. So the differential of ln is 1 over x. Now, for y equals a to the power of x, this is a slightly more complicated rule, and you need to know how to prove this. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through it step by step. The first thing we're going to do is take logs of both sides. So you can see here, all I've done is I've just learned both sides, nice and straightforward. I've started with y equals a to the x, and I've just put a ln in front of both sides. So I've still got the same expression as I have above. I've done the same thing to both sides. I've learned both sides. Now what I'm going to do now is manipulate this right-hand side a little bit. This right-hand side now can be rearranged using the laws of logs in that I can take out the x as the power here to make it a scale factor multiplier at the front. So I've now got ln of y, that left-hand side doesn't change, equals x times ln a. All I've done here is I've used the power of, uh, I've used the rule of logs where I can bring out a power as a scale factor multiplier. And now what I'm going to do, which it looks a bit weird, but trust me on this, is I'm now going to get rid of the luns or do the inverse of the natural log, which is to e both sides. So I'm now going to e both sides. If I do e to the ln y, e to the luns obviously cancel each other out. So I don't need to do e to the y, I'll just have y. So from this step to this step, I am learning both sides. And from this step to this step, I am eing both sides. So it's now e to the right hand side equals e to the left hand side. e to the left hand side will simplify to y equals e to the x ln a. Now what have I got here? I've got something that I can now differentiate. What rule am I going to use? Well, I'm going to use this rule up here. If I've got y equals e to the kx, y equals e to the kx, just like I have here, it looks very similar. I've got an e at the bottom, I've got an x here, and I've just got a ln a here, which is effectively the same as my k here. Then the derivative of this, down the bottom here, is going to be ke to the kx. So k here, that is representing ln a, is now going to differentiate to ln a, so this is effectively our k down the bottom here, e to the x ln a. Okay, so now it's ln a e to the x ln a. And now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to simplify what I've got here. e to the x ln a, well that's just what y is equal to, and y is obviously equal to a to the power of x. So bringing that a to the x back in, I'm going to have ln a times a to the power of x. And this is my final answer here. Okay. So if I want to differentiate, for example, e to the, sorry, if I want to differentiate 5 to the power of x, 
my answer is going to be, well, ln of 5 times by 5 to the power of x. So not only do you need to know that shortcut and how to actually do the differentiation, but you do actually need to know and memorize how this works, because it could be asked in the exam, it could be show that y equals 5 to the power of x, the differential of that is ln 5 times 5 to the power of x, and you'd have to explain why going through all of these steps here. So the first thing you do is learn both sides, use a power of logs to bring the x to the front. Then you do the reverse of that learn, which is e both sides. And then you use a rule of differentiation, which is e to the kx differentiates to ke to the kx. So that's why the ln a pops out to the front here. The ln a is effectively a scale factor multiplier on the x here, and the scale factor multipliers pop out to the front. And then you rearrange that e to the x ln a back into y and back into a to the power of x, and there we are, that's your final answer. Okay, so that's how we differentiate the three terms that we're going to look at today then. So what we're going to run through now is a few questions where it's just quick differentiation. So we're going to start off with y equals ln x cubed plus ln 7x. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use this rule of differentiation over here, but we're going to split this up a little bit beforehand. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 3 out as a power. So I'm going to bring that out as a um, as, a, as a power using a law of log. And then I'm going to undo, so that's simplified that bit there, and then I'm going to use the law of logs. If I've got two things that are being multiplied together, I can separate their LUNs with an addition. And now LUN of 7 is just a number. And we all know what happened to numbers when we differentiate them. They just disappear um, into nothingness. Now what I've got here is 3 ln x and a ln x. I could simplify that to a 4 ln x. And then differentiating this, well, I know that I know that ln x differentiates to 1 over x, so I'm going to have 4 over x. And then ln 7 is a number, that just differentiates to 0, so dy by dx is equal to 4 over x. Right, okay, so the next thing we're going to look at differentiating then is this term here. We've got y equals 2 minus 3 e to the 7x over 4 e to the 3x. Now, probably the first thing I'd want to do here is get it into a form that I can differentiate. I can't just differentiate each of the individual components separately and then say, well, that's my answer. Um, what I have to do is I have to simplify what I've got here into just single powers of e to the x, um, and, and maybe some scale factor multipliers at the front. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to split it up into two separate fractions just like this. I need the denominator to be the same on both the fractions. That's how fraction addition and subtraction works. And now I can simplify what I've got here. Looking at the numbers and what I can simplify the numbers to, well, 2 over 4 simplifies to a half. And then it's going to be a half times e to the minus 3x because I've got e to the 3x on the bottom of a fraction here. Um, so it's going to be e to the minus 3x. That's how the powers indices rule works. On the right hand term here, I've got 3 over 4 for the numbers. And then on the powers, I've got e to the 7x over e to the 3x. And if I'm dividing one indice by another, I take away the powers. So 7x take away 3x is going to be e to the 4x. So simplifying what I've got here, I've got half e to the minus 3x. It needs a minus on the power there because it's on the bottom of a fraction. And then it's going to be minus 3 quarters. Don't change them around. And then it's going to be 7x minus 3x. That's e to the 4x. And now I can differentiate. And remember that with these numbers here that are in front of the x's, uh, that are on the powers of e, they're going to be scale factor multipliers out to the front. But we don't have to reduce the power by 1 um, in this rule here. It's only x to the power of something like 7 will I reduce the power by 1. In this case here, it's a different rule. It's an e rule for differentiation. So I'm just going to multiply that number to the front. So for the differential here, I'm going to have 
minus 3 over 2 e to the minus 3x. Notice here how I've multiplied the half and the minus 3 together to get minus 3 over 2. And on the last component here, I'm going to have 3 quarters times 4. That's just 3 e to the 4x. And there's my final answer. OK, so your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here. Then there'll be lots of extra questions for you to have a go at in exercise 9b afterwards. But here's just two quick ones for you to have a go at. OK, so hopefully the first thing that you did with this uh, left-hand question here is to, s is to separate the two logarithms using the addition rule first. So you're going to different... you're going to split up the LUNs in it. It will be LUN of 2 plus LUN of x cubed. Remember, LUN of 2 is just a number, so that will eventually differentiate to nothing. And then it's going to be 3 LUN x. And we all know that 1 over x, uh, sorry, LUN of x differentiates to 1 over x. So now let's go ahead and do the differentiation. So we've simplified our function here into something that's now differentiable. Lun of 2, that's just a number, that disappears. And then I've got 3 times this ln of x function. I know the ln of x function differentiates to 1 over x, so my answer here is going to be 3 over x. On the second question here, we've got two functions that need differentiating, and I can differentiate them straight away. For the 5 to the x function, I showed you that one earlier, the answer to that is ln 5 times 5 to the power of x. And that's just a rule that you have to know. When you've got a 5 to the power of x here, it's ln 5 and then 5 to the x again. For the second term here, we times the 5 by the 7 at the front, but we don't reduce any power by 1 afterwards. It's just 7 times 5 is 35, e to the 5x. And there's our final answer for this differential. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 9b. Challenge yourself on the more harder ones, the problem solving, the exam style questions later on. And do get really good at this because later on when we come to differentiating harder functions and differentiate and integration as well, you're going to need to know this kind of basic stuff here off by heart and super quickly. So make sure you practice and practice until you cannot get them wrong. Thanks very much for watching.